we're all about the archers and we are here today this is so exciting we're here today to talk to kenton archer or i should say richard attlee who plays kenton archer richard you are very very welcome on this podcast well thank you very much lovely to be here likewise it's an election year richard uh, so i think we need yes. to get political straight away um and right, I, believe okay. I'm, I believe I'm right in saying you're related to one of Britain's finest prime ministers, Clement Attlee. Yes, I, yeah, I am. He's my uh, grandfather. Yee! Yes. That's quite something, isn't it? Did, did you ever meet him? I mean, did, did you know him very well? Did you ever well, you know him well? Actually, it's quite, that is quite interesting. Well, no, I didn't know him very well because I was four when he died. Oh, okay. um, so he died in 1967. And um, I used to say, when people would say... Do, what you just asked me, I would say, oh. uh, well, no, no, I don't. I don't really have any recollections of him, but I, I do have a recollection of him. Probably my earliest memory was that I uh, burst in on him on the loo. Um, oh. The reason I remember is because he, all I remember is a, a very old man just shouting for me to get out. And that is my memory of my grandfather on the Parsi. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> On the on the uh, throne, yes. Right. I'd love to say it was sort of you know something as he was sitting talking to me you know about socialism, but uh, no, it wasn't. Yeah. It was that. But I'm, and I'm, I'm, am I right that you once played him as well? Did you not play him in in Dunkirk? Is that right? Very good. Yeah, I did. I played him in Dunkirk. Though I think yes, I've played him twice. Um, that was, and I was probably far too young, so I think it was kind of PR exercise, really. Hmm. Uh, but another, nonetheless, I mean, that was an amazing... I don't know if you've seen... That was a BBC three-part. It was uh, a three-part three TV part. series, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It's, absolutely, yeah. it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, and yes, I was in a couple of scenes around the cabinet table. table. Um, uh, and really there, uh, sort of decoratively, I'd say. Right. Case. But then I played him in a... as a radio play... Uh, recorded at Peer Productions in Brighton called uh, Stuffing Their Mouths with Gold uh, about the founding of the NHS in 48. Oh. And that was uh, that was much more interesting, much more. And it was a, all hmm. mainly with, about sort of Bevan, obviously, was at the centre of it, but there was some yeah. interesting yeah. sort of scenes between Bevan yeah. and that, Liam. So that was more sort of, sort of rewarding to do. And, Ma was, and yeah. Michael Sheen is just about to start at the National Theatre, a play about Nye Bevan as well. He's, I think it's opened, hasn't it? I think yeah, it's opened. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. What was it like playing someone um, of your family? It's not just kind of another historical person. It's the fact that you're playing someone who was in your family as well. Was there added pressure from other family members and things like that? Yeah. I was doing a radio play that's less because it's less high profile. Um, there's a... Yes, it was sort of strange. I mean, I have to say, I didn't have a great deal to to do in it. It's quite nice because you get sort of, well, you get treated generally. People were very nice. They're very, obviously, like as we're talking about it now, people are sort of interested. Um, but you do feel a pressure. And also, although, you know, I have a certain, you know, I'm bald. I have a certain family resemblance, but I don't know that I look massively like him. So I, f and he was very particular. I mean, you know, I watched lots of films about a lot of what I could find. Um, and then you do get caught between thinking how exactly do, how exactly do I try and portray him? And then you can end up like any historical figure actually play. You think, oh, I'm going to end up being a sort of caricature, um, of him with that 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 delivery and particularly as the delivery you hear is often something through Pathé news or something where it everybody seems to sort of sound quite you know like you know quite sort of nasal and sort of, dear, 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 they come you know dear, whatever you know anything so so there is that and you think oh am i gonna and if it's like you say like it's your family member you think oh, yeah, there is a little bit more like people say there's nothing like that you know um <laughs> so yes i think there was a bit of sort of additional sort of pressure but like i say but but in the radio play it was nice because i was working with a director i knew who was who was, was, a, was a friend and that was sort of much you know that therefore immediately i didn't you know because you're just going in to do it with somebody you know it's much more it's much easier than if you don't know someone at all and if, if you're filming it's very quick and just do it you know but as i say when i was filming it really i was just sort of at the table you know puffing on a pipe with a with a couple of saying a couple of words it was you know not much. A, a bit, a bit like the great man himself. 
a man of few words. Exactly. There you go, you see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 Well, Richard, yeah. we need to talk about Kenton, the man who is never happier than when he's with a tannoy system making some announcements. <laughs> Well, yeah, you say that, but although it's been a little while, I feel like a bit, you mm. know, it's been a, I don't know, the last time Kenton, you'll, you'll probably be able to tell me, the last time Kenton had a, a microphone uh, in his hand. The, it's been the, a the little long, while. The longest running customer, I think you made an announcement, didn't you, in the book? Um, well, or was that Jolene? I seem to remember that, that I think I was briefly at the mic, but I think Jolene came and uh, I think she did the honours then. There have been... A, Many, many times. I always, when I think of Kenton on his microphone, I always think it's single wicket, single wicket. Yeah. Sort of, yes. uh, endlessly was him. I mean, there was a, a time, I don't know if it's so much recently, but there was a time, you're right, when, when it, it seemed to be just about every month that he would be up there, yeah. you know, at a fate or, or, you know, or a cricket match. And he would be there, come, yes, on with his, with his megaphone. But the day that Kenton was tragically attacked in the car park, which I'm sure we'll talk more about, was the first day I heard Kenton making announcements in the pub and he didn't have a microphone for those announcements. And I immediately thought, what, what's wrong? But I had no idea that uh, a it's few minutes later... Yes, <laughs> yes. So the next time I hear Kenton without a microphone, I'm going to be very concerned, Richard. You know that something, something bad is going to happen to him. Mm. Yes, mm. I hadn't mm. thought of that. Maybe it's all in there. Maybe maybe you're right. It's all uh, subliminal. Subliminal. Um, yes. 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 I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, he was. Yes. He, he sort of. Uh, yes, you're right. I seem to remember whistling at the, uh, at the the the, the people, the 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 uh, whoever they were, mm. who were um, wrongdoers. Then in the car park mm. later, the yeah. group of of ne'er do wells. Mm. Well, I mean, still on the Tannoy theme, when we interviewed Susie yes. Riddell who yes. plays Tracy, I mean, she said she's never happier it was within the arches uh, than when um, Kenton's on a tannoy or a microphone or a PA system. So do you I reckon it's... I a lot to say that, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is is that, that she said? Well, that's very, yeah, that's yeah. very sweet of her. Yeah, she said what, that. But is she particularly... I don't know. Why did she say why she particularly likes hearing... It just makes the, her happy. Tannoy. She knows it's... Is it? everything. Everything is all right in Ambridge when you're on a tannoy oh, okay. or a PA so system. All, yeah, yeah, all is well. All is well with so, the world. Um, and, you, and you weren't in the car park and you got attacked by a dog. There you are. It's well, proof. It. If he'd only had a tannoy, if he'd gone out with a yes. tannoy... <laughs> yes. He'd have probably been okay. So the, maybe that's the thing, that he always just has to have a... Yes. Hang do, you around think that is, do, you, do you think that is Kenton's happy place, with a microphone in front of him? It does seem to be. I mean, yeah, no, mm. I think he does. Yeah, he does really. Uh, yeah. 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 He, he likes that. I think he's quite a showman, really. That's, I mean, you know, he did did a few pantos and like he, he quite likes. To, yeah, he does. He likes to perform. He's quite, yeah. you know, at yeah. ease, I think. Yeah. yeah. But he hates farming. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> I mean, when, when, like, when Kenton first arrived on the scene, in, when, when I first played him, and he, because he, he sort of appeared, I played him briefly uh, to do, there was a story about an inherit, the inheritance. There was a bit of row with the, the, the siblings. And then when I first came back, I think he did some farming stuff. I seem to remember, but everything he did was an absolute disaster. Everything mm. he touched, you know, he'd be sort of out trying to trim the hedgerows or something. It, it just like, you know, it's, break everything. Or it's a bit like everything. David in the bull, isn't it? Everything went right. Like David in the books. So yes, they they have their places, those boys. Those old boys. Yeah. Well, I was looking online and your brutal dog attack um, kind yes. of made the headlines and everything. There were quite a few headlines coming up, like Major Soap airs brutal UK first with a horrific dog attack scene. How did it feel to kind of be part of all of the up-and-coming dog attacks and everything, the fact that it was in the news quite a lot yeah, to do with was, various I, dogs and everything. Yes. Well, it was incredibly sort of topical, wasn't it? The attack itself, I thought I'm interesting in terms of when we recorded it because um, we really sort of went for that. So when we were in, in the studio, uh, it was Julie Beckett was directing it, and we we sort of said, okay, how are we going to do this? The, the, the attack, the dog, Kenton, and, and then the scene after the attack with Jolene on the floor. And so we really, I mean, I thought, I thought I really have to go. This has to be done 
really full on because I don't want it to seem in any way laughable, you know, which we, so we did it and we did it several times, but we really, really did it. So it was about a 20, 20 second take each time or more. And I have to say it, I completely, I was, cause I was sort of, you know, on the floor and sort of writhing around and goodness knows what. And by the end of it, I was completely spent. And for the, about two weeks after, I really, I felt like I'd been in a fight and it was, it was, and I would say to Julie, is that all right? We don't, case you know, no, it sounds horrific. It sounds great. It sounds, you know, really nasty and horrible. I said, good. We wanted to be very, very nasty and horrible. And, um, and then the thing was that I think because, because, uh, it's kind of, it could be triggering and it could be a lot, it's really unpleasant. And those dogs were really fantastically violent and awful. When we, when I, when we, when it was edited down, I think it was like, you heard the, <laughs> and it went, kind of whoa, whoa, and that was it. It was about like, it, it was like over. And I was like, I don't believe it. I, I nearly, you know, I, I killed myself. <laughs> I killed myself. I kind of literally crawled out of the studio <laughs> after recording that. And I could have just gone, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, and I understand oh. why. And so dramatically, you know, that the dogs probably there, they tell the tale. They're there, that violence of their, of, mm. of that, that mm. sound from them. But I did, yes, I do. Mm. I, I could have, I could have saved myself a lot of, a lot of pain and <laughs> sort of anguish. Um, but we got, we got all your pain afterwards when you were writhing on the ground. Didn't well, you, you did. That, and that, actually, that was very convincing. Was very convincing. Was very convincing. It was quite useful because mm. now, even though, even now that months on, it's still because of that partly, which, you know, it's like, I remember that. I remember the feeling of being, feeling completely kind of shattered and it's, it's, it's good as, as one moves through the months and whatever happens and you don't really know, but you do know an attack of that severity, unless you're well with anybody, however, whoever you are, it will, it will stay with you. And whatever, however that will manifest itself, you don't know. But any opportunity that you get in any at any time or any moment within the script, then you can say, "Oh yeah, yes, I can, I can draw on that that particularly grueling sort of experience." Yeah. But you had that moment when it got too noisy in the bull, and David picked up on that, didn't he? That was a moment when he lost yeah. it. Yes, that was. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. that was. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and otherwise, he's being relatively controlled. I think relatively. I mean, yeah. In, yeah. in pain, but also you don't want to, you know, like anything, people don't sort of, you don't want to hit every scene, something going, oh, you know, you don't. People no. have moments when they're kind of feeling a bit better, moments when they're not feeling so good, mm. you know, when you're covering, when you're up and being okay, but you're not or whatever. So it's mm. all, it's that mm. kind of mm. journey, I think. For yeah. Him. Mm. Oh. It must be quite challenging because Kenton to me is the fun one in the Archers. He's the one that I always look forward to hearing and he often adds some humour to scenes. And yet this was such a change mm. to go through that. I, I mean, it must have been quite interesting as an actor to have those those different types of a character to yeah. play. Well, yeah, of course. and I think anybody would say that, that you want sort of the sort of light, and shade so that and when you get the chance to do something like that or any sort of uh well any storylines that are that are more more serious particularly if you are often like you say often you're kind of pretty light-hearted uh you're a light-hearted character quite a lot of the time you and um yeah you're involved in sort of maybe a lot of comedic stories like you know the one comes to mind not long ago is the diary when they found his diary, he found his diary. Or did they? They found his diary. That's right, Dave. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, which is great fun to do, but it's just, it is interesting. You go, oh right, this is good to get your teeth into something much, you know, yeah, more dramatic. That's what you want. All any any actor, anybody on the Archers will say, oh well, yeah, I really like a scene where there's you know a bit of sort of meaty conflict uh, going on, or so, you know, something for me to get my t teeth into, um, something sort of dark, you know dark, dirty, dangerous stuff is always mm -hmm. like, you know, that's that's always interesting, you know. But you're, the, well, Kenton is, I believe, 66. You're quite a bit younger than that, Richard. But 
Kenton's 66. He's, I couldn't believe that. I think of, of him being like late uh, 40s. He's 66 in August, I think. Yeah. I think. This year. They're, yeah. They are. They're 66 because I'm 61 in June. So I think I'm, there's five years. Yes, I mean, the ages, I'm sure you must have had this conversation before because it's a kind of, have you never had the sort of, the ages in the archers because the way people have been cast and, you know, going way back, of course, when when I think, you know, it, because it's very much about people's voices and I'm sure it still is when you're casting, but it's it's different now, I think, probably. I imagine a bit as well. You're thinking, what does someone look like? Do they, how will they fit? You know, I, I think it would be natural to think that, but not back in 90, you know, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever. I think it was probably less of a concern. But people's ages are, are yeah, we're, we are quite a long way apart. I mean, the classic one is myself and Judy Bennett, where we are, you know, a long, we're, we're, we're playing twins, but we are, yeah. our ages are very different. But I, as I say, but I yeah, just that. think that Kenton is late 40s from his, you know, the way he yeah. acts in the well, past. I, I don't think of that's him that I think he's, I think when I, when I, well, was quite when I when I first started when I did my very first episode was a young director. I don't. This isn't sort of because I think the same as you. I think Kenton is 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 a young spirit. So he 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 shouldn't you know. So him sounding younger is is sort of is fine. But when I my very first episode, the director said, "Richard, um, you're sounding quite young. Could you could you give make your voice you know a little older?" And I thought. I, I don't know. I can't do it. What am I, what am I supposed to do? So, 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 so I thought, no, well, I said, yeah, yeah, no, sure, sure, I'll do it. And I said exactly the same because uh, there's nothing I, you know, there's nothing I can do now. This is my voice. But I did think, like you, I thought, well, I don't think that's such a problem because however old he was then, um, well, however old he was then, 25 years ago, 24 years ago, whatever it was. Um, so, so I think that's it. So I think it's fine. If Kenton sounds or seems like someone in his 40s, I think that's right. I mean, I think over the year, recent years, he's kind of matured a bit. I mean, I think when he started, he was in his teens. You know, when I started, but he was like, he, he was just this sort of, um, you know, like I said, everything went wrong. Everything turned to part. And he was a kind of, quite a sort of, I mean, I think he's matured is what I'm trying to say in the last, particularly in the last six or seven years. So I think he's sort of come through to his, his 40s now, so to speak. When we interviewed Holly, who plays Alice, mm. and Daisy, who plays Pip, yes, um, they both of them said that they love their character. They're very protective about their character. Are you the same about Kenton? Do you like Kenton? Would you would you befriend him yourself? Would Richard get on with Kenton in real life? Do you do you, do you like him as a character? Yes, I like him. I like Kenton. I think that he's. Um, I think I'd be a bit, I think he's somebody, I, I I think I'd like him more now. I think I'd have found him quite tricky to get on with 10 years ago. Um, I think he's kind of just like calmed a bit um, and he's less sort of self-regarding um, and more, mm. sort, I think he's a, yeah, he's a more sympath, more simpatico sort of character than he, he was. But I mean, I'd still always have found him, I think he's always quite interesting. I think he's an interesting sort of multi-layered, sort of um, quite mercurial character, certainly so, so that I would find him fascinating. And I think he's fun. And I think if you're with him, you have, you, you have a good time, you know. So I think he would be a fun person to be with, but sometimes you would be sort of, right, oh, hell, what's happening now with this character? Ooh. I think he's quite strong quite direct can be quite tricky can be quite prickly Impe can impetuous quite peevish, as well, yeah. but can be brilliant fun can be funny can be quite witty so he got a great sense of of fun and very dynamic and very actually most of the time sort of very kind of positive generally i think he's a sort of positive person um mm. yeah, yeah so i I would, but I'm I'm aware of I think his uh, his sort of the sides of him that might as when I look at him I think yeah I can see why Kenton would irritate people, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, or rub people up yeah. the wrong way, yeah, but you know, I, yes, you know, that's that makes it quite interesting and 
and, yeah. and, and fun to play him. Yeah. Do you think you're quite like Kenton? Oh, God, some of me, but no. Some yes and no, I suppose. I mean, I'm, I, yeah, I, well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, obviously, because the, you, it's sort of, I'm not playing something vocally that's like a million miles from me. So there's elements of feel. And I suppose, I don't know what, I don't, I don't know. Am I quite like him? Mm. Mm, you have um, a megaphone that you use at home. Yeah. No, I suppose actually what it says, <laughs> actually, you see, because I'm thinking vocally, I think if I was playing a character where I was like, you know, so sort of divorced from my, my, my own sort of sound, maybe I'd think, oh, I'd very, di but because, but actually I think in terms quite different, really. Yeah. I mean, what, what people probably say is all the positive things I'll take and all the negative things. Yeah. I'm not like, I'll take that. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah. Probably some, some things. But I love even the subtle way you manage to convey things. Like when you're talking to David and you refer to him as Dave, it just, no, you're no. getting all your sort of sibling feelings. It just into that one word and it comes across beautifully, I think. Well, that relationship is, is, uh, yes, is, a, is again, is a sort of an interesting, an interesting one. And uh, yes, the, and that's quite, because depending on which, when the Dave, I feel like I, the calling of Dave. I feel like I'm in an episode of Only Fools and Horses, but and calling him Dave <laughs> is um, is uh, it, it's quite funny because depending on the writer, a new writer, an old writer, you, it's like some will be David, some will be Dave, and you sort of go, I think it's Dave. And no, that he would call him Dave then, and only only calls him David. <laughs> really, we say I think it's only David then when he's really really fed up with him. But most of the time, he just calls him Dave. And I think although it, it's um, it's not sort of, uh, sort of, and although it's not necessarily, I don't know how, whether it's how conscious it is or not. I mean, sometimes it's to, to kind of wind him up. It's become, it's become oh, yes. sort of just how he addresses his brother. Their, their relationship is complicated, isn't it? It's a classic sort of sibling relationship. They love each other, but they, they drive yeah. each other a bit mad at the same time. Yes. Well, what is it with Kenton and Sid Perks's former wives? First Kathy and then Julie. <laughs> yeah, what the, what the hell's going on? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, so uh, Kathy and Jolene. Yes, I I don't know. I don't know what it is because they're very very different. It's not like they are uh, very similar types at all. Um, they've, they've had the very very different uh, characters. Um, so I think you'd have to say it's just a pure a matter of chance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, yeah. he doesn't cast his net wide, does he? <laughs> you don't want to go too wide. You've got it's a, it's a very limited number. It's a it's a little close <laughs> close community. It's a small pool. Were, were, were you were you pleased that you were spared the infamous shower scene? Yeah, although I said to Buffy the other day, we were talking about, it, and I said, didn't we have didn't we have a sort of shower yeah, on our? I was trying to remember, and I said, didn't we do a kind of? They did a kind of nod to it. Where we went, oh. and I could be wrong about this. This I could have dreamt this. Okay, so I'm, so, you know, but I thought we were in something like, I don't think it was Monaco because I don't think I'd have gone to Monaco, but it was somewhere, and there was a kind of shower running in the background. And they were talking about getting into it, and this this is obviously a lot after. And I thought it definitely felt like an homage to their very famous shower scene, um, which was obviously many years before. Um, mm. But no, I'm why well, I'd be quite up for it. I'd be quite up for a shower scene. Yeah, yes, I think uh, that would be quite fun, but not combined with the dog attack at the same time. Oh, I don't know if it would be very good for the listeners to hear. I don't know if they'd particularly enjoy hearing Kenton and Jolene in the in the shower, I suspect. Oh, they're still traumatised by Sid and Jolene, T totally traumatised. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and that's, what, 25 years yeah. ago, is it? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's funny. And I'm guessing the, after... The, the kind of resonance, uh, after, it? Uh, after your dog attack, it would be hard to get your leg over anyway, wouldn't it? This is very true. He can barely get up the stairs. So, you know, uh, yes, yes. I don't know quite how mobile he is, really. Um, exactly. You know, we did sort of, it's sort of that sort of recovery thing. We think, well, just how easy is this? And it, I suppose like anything, it depends if, you, you know, if you do too much too soon, you know, then mm. you don't know and you, and whether it comes back and how you're controlling it. So, 
I don't know. Yeah, exactly. You've got to be careful. Got to yeah. be careful. It's not, as you yeah. said, he's, he's 60. Well, I think he's, he's knocking 66 now. Yeah. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. So if you were heading into the bull, what would yes. your drink of choice be? And would you be joining in in the quiz or would you just be out the back with the plowmans? <laughs> well, no, be in there. St Kenton or me? Bit of both. Yeah, either way you want to answer. Well, Kenton would be stuck to be in on the mic doing alive. the, yeah. Yeah, no, he's in the bull and the he's going to be, he'll be fighting Jolene for the mic probably and uh, coming yes. up with the ideas, <laughs> the quiz and running the quiz and yeah, not letting anyone... Yeah, he'd he'd want to take over and do it and be there, be the kind, you know, the master of ceremonies. The you know, he'd be doing that. I'd be if I was in in the bull. Oh yeah, well, I'd I'd be very much. I'd be having a pint of shires. Now, food is very important to us on this podcast. So my question food. to you is: Yeah, if oh. Kenton has a favourite biscuit, what biscuit would Kenton's <laughs> favourite be? I don't know. I'm going to say the same biscuit my grandfather, to bring it back to my granddad's favourite biscuit, Gary Baldy. Very, very good. There you Thank go. you for that. You well, let's go on to the questions from Facebook. Quentin, you've got the first one, I believe. I have. <clears throat> Are you ready? Are you ready for these, Richard? I don't uh, know the if first I've one, Quentin, but fire away anyway. Okay. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> go on then. Something to me. <laughs> so the first question, Richard, to you comes from Claire, and she yes. says, "Are you missing Shula?" And she also says, "You and Jolene have done brilliantly with the ball. So, uh, are you missing Shula?" Claire would like to know. Well, thank you, Claire. First of all, that's very sweet of you to say that, and um, about the ball. And uh, yes, Kenton is missing Shula. I think yes. And um, I mean, he was. I mean, he was very uh, sort of. Well, seemed actually quite upset when when she announced she was going and then when she was actually going, there was all that, you know, all that talk about how much he was going to miss her and how sort of bereft he was, was feeling about it. So, um, I think he does. And also when she came back, how, how grateful he was and how pleased he was to see her. So yes, I think he, he, he does. He definitely does miss her. Yes. Well, I've got a question from Nikki and yeah. uh, she's put Kenton's getting on a bit now. Cheeky. Yeah, all right. Um, Nikki. What? <laughs> What do you Easy. think he'll do? <laughs> what do you think he'll do in his retirement? Has he got any new hobbies along the way? <laughs> oh yeah, some real off-roading madness. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah, peacock acquisitions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, what will Kent does, Maybe him and Freddie will start a kind of sort of marijuana kind of farm. They just do a sort of archers go Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. That would be fun. I kind of like that. I like that because I like their relationship. It's quite fun. And I think that would be, uh... <laughs> yeah, something That's like that. Spot mm. on. That would be one um, heck of a he... spin off. <laughs> what has... I think he'd be busy. Whatever he did, he's one of those people in retirement. He, I, I think I can't really see him retiring for quite a long time. I think he'd, he'd always want to be active and doing stuff. He's kind of quite, hmm. you know, I can't imagine him sitting around sort of watching the telly, watching this morning. <laughs> I don't think he'd be doing that. I think he'd be <laughs> on the go doing something. He's quite active, you know, whatever it was. Well, brilliant. Well, the next question is from Dawn, who says, would you ever consider running a real pub, Richard? No, I would not, Dawn. <laughs> I've always liked to visit pubs. I live in, in Lewis in Sussex, and there are lots of really lovely pubs. And we have fantastic, we have Harvey's is our bitter, which is brewed in Lewis. I, you may not know. So we have a, it's our local brew. And um, I love, yes, I love going to the pubs and sitting in the pubs and being in the pubs. But I really, the, no, I don't, the thought of actually trying to run a pub, no, not really, not for me, I don't think. OK, we've got one from Barry now. Uh, he says, I've always enjoyed the Kenton character. Some great comedy and at other times he's so frustrating. He's got a couple of questions. <laughs> we, <laughs> he's got a couple of questions. He says, we rarely hear of Mary all these days. Is Kenton still yes. in contact with her? And would he, you, uh, or Kenton, I guess, like to see Mary or return to the Archers? Well, yes, that's interesting. I sometimes wonder. I always think, oh, that's quite an interesting character that they could, you could bring back is Mary and I'm sure she's sort of again like 
I'm sure there are lots of characters that that have been talked about that are on the sort of a back burner. Um, Because she, I think she's the same age as my son. And so she is, uh, I think she's 22 now. I think she's a May, a May baby. She's 22. So she, I'm not, and I'm not sure. There's, I really don't know what she's up to because we haven't heard from her for a long time or even, I don't think, unless somebody has talked about it and I haven't heard what, what they've said about what she is up to. So I think, mm. yeah, she could come back and be a very, if you wanted to, you can create a character, anything you want. So, so that would be a sort of quite, that would be fun. Yes, I'd like that. And it would be quite interesting. And of course, you throw something into the dynamic, their relationship, what kind of dad he's been, not a great dad, really, or not a present dad. So yeah, that would throw up all kinds of interesting, dramatic possibilities you can imagine. So yeah. maybe at some point, who knows? I imagine maybe it could be years down the line. I would imagine it would be like that she would be a character that some might think, oh, yes, let's, uh, we could bring her in to cause mm. cause something I or not or yeah, cause some sort of chaos or whatever or not or whatever yeah 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 okay well I've I've got a question from Max that kind of carries on with that because he's mm. mentioned Meriel as well yeah and so he he's said um would you ever like to take a trip to New Zealand with some other characters like Jolene and Fallon for instance to see Meriel and her friends and family possible partners mm. All of that lifestyle as another Ambridge. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. As long as the studio comes with us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go there without the studio for a long time and settle there. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, yes. I'm sure. Ken, I'm sure Kenton would enjoy a, a trip to see Meryl. Yes, I think he would. It'd be a of very course. long episode on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the plane, the flight. Get it. I mean, it would be. I mean, they have done. <laughs> Obviously, you do do, you know, episodes. I've done an episode I can't, in Austria, I think. With Kathy, was it in Austria? So, yes, and they, you do do, obviously, episodes that are outside. So that would be, yes, it would be quite fun. But I, I think, like, going back to it, I think Meriel as a character would be much more interesting to, 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 to drop a character that you can literally make any decisions about. You, you know, say, mm. what is she going to be like? This character, we're going to bring her in. And see how how she reacts with all the other people, all the kind of her, fa- you know, because there's so many relatives she has, and all the young younger characters she's have, and how she get on. So, so that would be a lot of fun, I think, seeing how she reacts. For, if I was, a, I think, as a listener, I think, how would Mer- Meriel going to react with all the other younger archers characters, and what might that churn up? You know, that would be that would be, obviously that's what you think that would be quite fun and quite interesting to see we'll mention we'll mention it to jeremy for you yes do do yes well the next one is from angie who says um she's got a question as well but she says i met mr attley when he was part of the archers on stage going back to the good old days she says when she was a size 12 and you had hair um, Richard sold me an what? Archer's mug when he was manning the merch table. I can't remember if it was Tunbridge Wells or Brighton. So that that's going back, Richard. I don't know if you... Right. It's going back so yes. far that I'm ashamed to say, I yeah, I, I don't remember being in Tunbridge Wells and Brighton on an Archer's... Are you sure I was, it was me as the Kenton? Um <gasps> It might be an imposter. Well, she's got a question for you, so let let's see how you get on with this one. Because she... I've never had much hair as Kenton. There, there have been other incarnations. Oh, as oh. You know, oh. Bobby. You... Yes. 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 Well, Angie, we'll have... yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Angie says that um, she's just waiting for things to go tits up with Jolene. Her guess is it's when you find out who or what was behind the savage dog attack. So please, can we ask you, Richard? If you're a dog lover in real life, I yes, I like. I haven't got a dog. I like dogs. I had a dog as a kid. I loved our dogs when I was a, a kid. Um, I like. I tell you, I like dogs. I don't know if I'm a dog lover. <laughs> I love the dogs. Their owners less so, but I do. Uh, <laughs> I do. I, do, I really like. I like dogs. <laughs> then they jump up at you and you say, "Could you? Could you?" And they go, yeah. oh, he's just fun. He's friendly. He's yeah, yeah, great, but he's completely yeah, wrecked yeah. everything I'm wearing. And yeah. It's like, so, <laughs> oh, he's just having a laugh. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay. He won't bite. He won't bite. He won't <laughs> bite. No, he won't bite. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I've got yes. this previous. No, I, I, um, 
I do like dogs, yes. Well, this, this uh, final question comes from Rob to you, Richard, and it sort of ties in with what you were wondering about Tunbridge Wells and Angie's observations or memories. It's yeah. more of a sort of potentially a, a, hush, a hushute question as well. How do you feel about taking over from another actor, Graham Kirk? Perhaps he had more hair than you. Um, so he's he says, uh, Rob's been listening to old programmes. Uh, did you, okay. Richard, get a chance to speak with the outgoing Kenton when you took over the role? No, I didn't. And I wasn't really aware. I think when I I auditioned for the part with Tim Bentick up at Pebble, Pebble Mill, um, and all I, I, I wasn't really aware of that. I, t I just, they said, oh, they're bringing the character back from Australia. Um, and I went up and I, I read with Tim along with other actors and in, they said, okay, we want to do a number of takes and, uh, we're going to do the first one. Can you be like Australian? So the first one, like Ken was like, you know, okay. Yeah, no, right, Dave. And what was happening? And he was back from Oz. And so he was sounding all like <laughs> this and he was going to be Australian. And, and it was like, you thought, God, how long has he been out there? And it's like, he'd yeah. been out there like a couple of years. Or is this going to, his <laughs> accent would probably drift away pretty quickly. But that was it. So we did a take in Australian and another take sound, um, yeah, sounding more or less like this. And, um, <laughs> and that was that. And, but I wasn't really, I don't remember being aware until later that there was, that it was, you know, being, that it, that, that another actor had played him in the past. Yes. And mm. at all. So no, I mean I think Judy Bennett voiced him actually. Uh, 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 Judy Shuler Shula um, voiced Kenton many years ago. Oh, there really? was another actor called Simon Gibbs Kent who did it as well. So every time we interview a cast member, mm. we ask them a question specifically to ask the next person coming on. And the last person we interviewed mm. was Holly, who plays Alice, the lovely Holly. And her question yeah. for you, for Kenton, was <laughs> if Alice went into the bull and asked Kenton to serve her an alcoholic drink, would Kenton serve yeah. her? I think he wouldn't. Mm. Mm. I think he wouldn't. No. No. Uh, but he, yeah, he, no, he wouldn't. But he, he'd be trying to do it. He, he'd, he'd sort of, try, I think he's, you know, quite good at sometimes. He, there's the sort of the Claire Rayner in Kenton can come out sometimes. And I think he'd try and sort of go outside the bar and say, look, come over, sit down at the table and have a little chat mm. about this. Yes. You yeah. Know, I don't think he'd just go, no, no, no. You know, I think he'd, you know, I think that, that side of him, which there is, that sort of side, when he can be actually quite good and quite, mm. you know, emotionally intelligent at times. Mm. You know, I think that that aspect of his nature would probably come to the fore. He, he was like that the other night with Fallon when he went round yeah, to, yes. to say, oh, that's, yes, I'm, um, yes, yes. Um, I'm so, sorry the way how Jolene was. Of course, we would help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there, there is a, you know, like I say, and I, that that sort of it's been there. I, you know, he was particular just to uh, take that, that the story with Elizabeth when Elizabeth was uh, you know, having her sort of the, 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 all the, the mental sort of strife and anguish and breakdown over the, the death of Nigel. And he was very good. Kenton was very good with her then, I think, to try and support her and be with her. So, you know, there is that sort of, yeah, that sort of is a part of his sort of nature, his character. Well, it's, um, Richard, it's just been fascinating talking to you and hearing more about Kenton, interviewing the cast members. I mean, I love Kenton before, but... Uh, hearing you talk about him has just made us love him even that much more. So, Richard, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, thanks Richard. Very kind of you. Thank Sorry you. Really enjoyed it. Thank you.